Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. All right, we're at uh, we're at my farm, and uh, what we're looking at is a creek crossing. I have a uh, I have three of such type of crossings, and what you can see here is this creek crossing has really kind of been berated. You see that where that uh, grass has kind of been laid down up above, where you got then you got the tall grass. We had a huge rain and it just came in here and took all this concrete down downstream and on the verge of washing this thing out. So today what we're going to do is we're going to clean this creek crossing up and restore it and hopefully set it up to a point to where we will never have a problem with this creek crossing again. Hey Joel, we got a big day today. Uh, we've got Josh Bulldozing and excavating. Bulldozing and excavation. And uh, we're sitting here at my farm at uh, one of my creek crossings. And uh, with that, I mean, we've been, we have three such creek crossings on this farm. Josh has helped me with one other one. Not quite to this level. Of right. So uh, we are uh, going to do something novel. But before that, let's, Josh, why don't you tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm just a single owner of the business. I've got a wife and five kids, and uh, the business, uh, we've been in business for uh, about 12 years and been uh, experienced for probably 15 to 18 years. Uh, so we've been doing it for quite some time. And uh, these crossings like this, become havoc for hunters. Uh, sometimes you can't get your stand in or you can't get your deer out. And there's multiple options as far as to uh, what you can put in these ditches to uh, make it accessible on the other side. Before we go into uh, creek crossing a little bit, Josh, what, uh, what other projects do you do? Oh, anything that involves dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Ponds, uh, clear timber, terraces, uh, waterways, ditches, I mean, tiling, tiling, house foundations, house, like yep, uh, demolition, the whole works, uh, do a lot of demolition in the cities, uh, you know, around the area. Um, I'm from down, just down in Missouri, and uh, traveled uh, three and a half hours before, you know, for, for certain jobs just to help somebody out, so, uh, we do, do just about anything that involves dirt. Awesome. Is it true that uh, JV hunter extraordinaire you might be going up uh, that Jones County to look at a pond yes 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 uh, actually I've got that pond um, he uh, I, I discussed it with him uh, he's got about an acre pond and it just wasn't built correctly so uh, when it got built it was not poured so right now he's got an acre pond that you can jump across so we're gonna go up there we're gonna drain it uh, recore the pond and then uh, rebuild it so he has something he can enjoy we haven't, we haven't talked to uh, JB about this, but we're probably going to go up there and make that another episode as far as pond restoration. Sure. Right? Because uh, a lot of times I know you did uh, restoration for one of the neighbors of yep. the yep. mine, and then also you dug a beautiful pond for me, so I uh, can't say enough about the work you do. Sure, well, I appreciate it. Uh, it the, the old ponds, you get a lot of old cattle ponds uh, that are built several years back. Several years back, they built them with just about anything they had. I've been to the point where uh, I was draining an old pond and found the row of tires right down the middle, and that's what they used for a core. So there was uh, hundreds of tires stacked in there and then plastic up against that, and uh, that's how they built the pond to, to try to hold the water. And uh, we were taking that pond out because it did not hold water, and then built a new one in its place. But, uh, wow. 
Yeah, so a lot of them old ponds that are, are there and that just won't hold water anymore for multiple reasons, not being cored correctly, or if they're a cattle pond and the cows have walked them down uh, and destroyed the dam, they can all be saved. You know, they can usually be saved or we'll tear the dam out and build a new one. So hey, let, let's just talk that just for a second before we go into creek process. Uh, tell us a little bit, what's the most unique thing you've ever found when you're out digging in your excavation? You're going to laugh. Headstones oh, for caskets. I had a, a guy down in Missouri, he called me and he says, hey, he says, my pond will not hold water. He said it just, it won't hold water. He said that uh, it's got five, five leaks through it. Well, the, the pond had big trees on it. Uh, and the roots had reached through the dam, in which was caused the leaks. But anyhow, as we were digging, we found uh, tombstones. Just uh, probably 20 to 30 names on them from World War One and Two. Um, he contacted the, you know, the authorities, and uh, I'm not sure where they went with that. But um, yeah, we dug up uh, no no bodies. Just somebody had taken them tombstones, and, and what they used them for was a stairway to go down the back side of the, the oh, dam. Geez. So, uh, long story short, from what I was told, this pond used to be used, it had a little cabin on it, and that stairway led down to a shower that they used the water out of the pond. And uh, you wanna talk about a little freaky doing a job when you find something like that. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so yeah. that's probably the most craziest thing I've ever oh, read. What a great through. story. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. All right, yeah. so here, let's talk, let's shift gears a little bit, let's talk uh, creek crossing. Um, what, what are the different types of creek crossings? The most common uh, is your normal tube crossing. Uh, if you've got a ditch that uh, doesn't go too crazy, uh, you can throw a tube in it and uh, you know make a quick crossing that way. Um, if you've got uh, ditches kind of like this one here, that uh, most of the time is a slow trickle, but when you get a good rain, it really gets with it. Uh, you can put Arkansas crossing in, a little water crossing, uh, the Arkansas crossing is, is uh, you pretty much pour concrete, but underneath of that concrete are tubes. And while the water is low, it will trickle through the tubes. And then when the water comes up, it can go over. And it does not destroy the crossing whatsoever. So and I've built them as well. Um, <coughs> put posts in on the uphill side and put posts in on the downhill side. Uh, line it with uh, bridge planks, and then you fill it full of riprap. So you know, or erosion stuff. And uh, there's one over by Albia that uh, done uh, six, eight years ago, and it's still there, exactly the same. Really? Never, never moved. So. What are we doing here today? Uh, well, this one here has uh, filled in, so the water's trying to cut around. And when it came up, it pushed all the riprap down the creek. So we're going to bring all that riprap back up, take this slab out, get the water so it goes back underneath, put some posts in on the downhill side, and then we're going to put all that rap riprap inside of the post so when the water comes up again it won't take it back down the creek again. So the water will go underneath the slab yes. and then it should, if it gets high it might go over but yes. it won't stand quite. Yes, yeah. It'll, it should go under it um, while it's like now trickling uh, but when it comes up is, is what you got to worry about and that's when you want everything to hold so you don't have to do this again and again and again. All right. Well Josh thank you so much. Looking you forward to it. You yes. bet. Thank you.
up doing this creek crossing. It took him about 45 minutes. Um, talking with Joel after the fact, you know, I probably could have, you know, rather than being a dumbass like I am, um, there's probably a program out there to, that could help this. So in the future, if you were to have any projects like this, we could probably look into the Equip and see if, uh, or if there's any other programs and check with your wildlife biologist or your uh, forester or anybody at the USDA to see if uh, there's an opportunity to uh, cost share in something like this. But that said, it took Josh probably 45 minutes to dig all this out. We put in some hedge posts in here to hold it back. I really expect those hedge posts to uh, do the trick. They're probably in four or five foot into the ground. And then uh, also, he then excavated out down the creek all the rock that's been done over the years and built a filtration system. So as this creek comes down, if we were to get a big rain, a big rain, I would expect this filtration unit would slow it down dramatically and improve my erosion down down below. You see down there on that bank, I don't have, and he also built up both sides of the bank. But there is one area down there that it looks like it's going to need some. Uh, some sort of erosion control. I know there's a there's a thing called wattles, which basically is if you're putting stuff. Um, it's basically think of it as like a, a rug, if you will, full of roots, intertwined roots that you stake onto a bank, and it will grow. And it might be that wattle might end up having uh, willows or dogwoods, etc., and it will embed into that bank and really provide a lot of stability. So. That will be one of the things I try to, I'll look to explore there. They're not very expensive. So, really happy how this turned out. And uh, I won't be burying my tractor this way much unless it's just for mowing. So, uh, because as I've stated in previous episodes, this is last year for crops. So, a lot of traffic going across here is really going to be ATV, ATV based. So, great job by uh, JD bulldozing and excavation. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.